I had mentioned that I was going to provide some additional information regarding materiality and how it applies to the audit. In this very brief video, we're going to cover a couple of pages within the textbook, starting on page 85, related to specific steps applying materiality. I recommend that you get your textbook and follow along this material, and I think together with listening to what I'm talking about, as well as reading the material, that it'll make a lot more sense. There are three specific steps in applying materiality to the audit. The first is the, to determine the overall materiality related to the financial statements. The next step is to determine the tolerable misstatement. And then finally, to evaluate the audit results. In step one, determining the overall materiality, the PCAOB guidance states that the auditor should can consider the company's earnings and other relevant factors. For public companies, firms typically use 2-5% to of net income before taxes. For non-public companies, we use net income. We may use other variables that may be more appropriate, but a common rule of thumb is this 5% of net income before taxes. The auditor would choose a lower percentage if there are other factors, such as material misstatements in prior years, the risk of fraud or the high risk of fraud, perhaps the entity is close to violating a covenant on a loan agreement, so we need to be much more concerned with incremental change within the financial statement. We also need to understand that small changes may affect the entity to miss forecasted revenue or earnings, so we want to be very cautious that perhaps the organization might be managing their earnings Therefore, we may want to lower the overall level of materiality. The entity may be operating in a volatile business environment, has complex business operations, maybe there's multi-locations, maybe it's multinational, or it may be operating in a highly regulated industry. All of these things would perhaps make us consider or help us to consider to use a lower level of net income in considering materiality. But what you see is there are some common benchmarks. Income before taxes, 3 to 5 percent, so 5 percent is right within the middle there. You could also consider the percentage of total assets, total revenue, net assets, or total liability. Once we've determined the overall misstatement level, the overall materiality, we then want to determine the tolerable misstatement. Tolerable misstatement applies to account balances as well as classes of transactions. In practice, auditors commonly set the tolerable misstatement for each account at between 50 and 75% of the overall materiality. Using 50 to 75% of the overall materiality will result in an amount that in com combination will be greater than the overall materiality. So what this means is that we need to consider this information. Some firms cap the size of the combined aggregate tolerable misstatement to a multiple of the overall materiality, but hopefully we're not going to be to the point where we are pushing the envelope in terms of getting these combined totals to be greater than the overall level of materiality. The next step is to evaluate the results. In evaluating misstatements related to account estimates, the auditor should be very careful in considering the risk of material misstatement, especially related to those accounts that are subject to estimates. When the aggregate misstatements are less than the overall materiality, the auditor can conclude that the financial statements are fairly presented. Conversely, when the aggregate is greater than the overall materiality, the auditor should request that the entity adjust the financial statements if the entity refuses, the next step is that the auditor should be issuing a qualified or an adverse opinion because the financial statements do not present fairly in conformity with GAAP. So we're going to take an example from the book, and this is the organization that the book uses in their presentation throughout the chapters. The first thing that we want to do is to determine the overall mater materiality Net income before taxes is about $36 million at 5%. The overall materiality is $1.8 million. We then determine the tolerable misstatement level at the account balance and classes of transaction. 
we're using the 50% rule. Therefore, we have the tolerable misstatement at $900,000. We then evaluate the results. Therefore, the tolerable misstatement can be used for determining the, determining the fair presentation of individual accounts. We're going to document this. We're documenting this in a worksheet. And this is an example of the worksheet that we have. So what we're doing here is we're taking a look at the misstatements that we've identified throughout the course of the audit. Now you notice that there are some pretty big numbers here. There's accrued liabilities, $215,000, something related to accounts payable of $227,000. There's some other big numbers, but each of these individual numbers are less than the tolerable misstatement level. You also notice that the totals for assets, liabilities, equity, and revenue are individually less than the tolerable misstatement level. You also notice that in total, that if we sum each of these numbers, that we are still within the overall level of material misstatement that we can accept. So therefore, based upon this, we would conclude that the financial statements present fairly in all material respects related to the financial performance of the organization. So I hope this helps as you are considering this material, and I look forward to our next discussion. <music>